So here is our last section on open solaris. Here I am going to quiz Abhishek on some of the more rather interesting questions from a user's perspective. <laughs> so, so are you ready for a rapid fire? Yes, question? absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. So the first question is, uh, if Linux does everything that open solaris does from a user's perspective, so what what does a typical reader want? Uh, there's a browser, there's a media player, probably a RSS feed reader, you know, many applications that are common. Linux does it, Open Solaris does it. Why would you say that, you know, Open Solaris is better? So you see, uh, of course, this is true that, you know, uh, most of the things which uh, Linux can do, even Open Solaris can do, and the, uh, vice versa. But there are certain very interesting aspect of uh, Open Solaris, which is right now not available in the Linux world. For example, uh, they differ in the most fundamental sense, as in Open Solaris is developed mm -hmm. on the Open Solaris kernel mm -hmm. and all the Linux based operating systems which you see, for example Ubuntu or um, Fedora or any such distributions, they are based on Linux kernel. Okay. So the kernel which is the heart of the operating system is different in both the cases. The user experience might be very similar, the reason being the same genome mm -hmm. is available on Open Solaris as well as on, on, on most of the Linux, uh, 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 Linux based distributions. And the applications like Firefox, they are common on, in Linux as well as in Open Solaris. But then, uh, things like ZFS file system, okay. uh, D-Trace, uh, they are natively supported on Open Solaris. So when you start doing something more, you know, when you start getting your hands dirty with the details of operating system, that's when you know Open Solaris uh, uh, has an edge, okay. or has something more to offer, or something new to offer. Right? So, uh, if you are already a Linux user, you would not find uh, Open Solaris to be much different. Okay. And, but it would allow you to, you know, uh, uh, do lots of interest, a uh, lot more interesting stuff uh, in a very different, different way uh, through ZFS, through D-Trace, through virtualization support, through zones okay. uh, and containers and all that. So, uh, you know, uh, that way Open Solaris has a lot more. Uh, things uh, which your users, which your readers would like to try to try out. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So Linux and Open Solaris are easily compatible in a way. Yeah. So uh, can I get my Linux applications to, my favorite applications to work on Open Solaris? Yes. And uh, it, you're saying the GUI is mm -hmm. genome based, right? Uh, can KD applications work on it? Yes, so uh, that's a very interesting question. You see, uh, most of uh, you know, very uh, most commonly used uh, Linux Linux application. It's very likely that you will find them on Open Solaris world as well. In most of the repositories of Open Solaris, be it in Contrib repository or be it, uh, the release, uh, the default release repository, or uh, you know, even we have a pending repository where uh, people keep contributing uh, the existing applications or their own applications on Open Solaris. So you would definitely find those applications uh, and you can install them. Uh, so uh, the chances are pretty high that you would find your favorite apps to be already present. Things like OpenOffice, uh, Firefox, uh, Mplayer and all that is already available on uh, Open Solaris and you can easily install them. KD, of course you can install KD in Open Solaris. There is a distribution uh, which is called Bellinex. It is an Open Solaris based uh, distribution which you can install and it is completely KDE, ba uh, KDE based and uh, mm, uh, Genome of course it is the default uh, uh, default uh, desktop environment. So Genome apps needn't be recompiled? No, not at all, not at all. You don't have to. In fact, if you see on a daily basis when you use Open Solaris, there is not many times that you would be actually compiling applications or so. So you would hardly, you know, for your day-to-day -day use, I think you would be hardly touching the terminal. Okay. It is only when you, you know, want to get your hands dirty, when you want to do some, uh, you know, funky cool stuff with Open Solaris, that's when you would want to use the terminal. The new version of Open Solaris. Uh, which is due in March, right? 2010.3. What's new with that version? Yeah, so you see, Open Solaris 2010.03 uh, is going to be a very exciting release. Uh, it is going to have ZFS deduplication feature uh, uh, by default. So you see, uh, for example, you have two files which are identical in uh, nature or differ very slightly. Okay. Okay. So ZFS deduplication, what will happen is it's not going to occupy the complete space of two files there is actually de duplication available. So if there are duplicate bits, it is possible now to uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, reduce such duplications into your uh, storage. Okay. So you can actually maximize uh, the use of your storage device. So it's kind of like incremental file storage. 
If yes. You put it in layman's terms. Exactly. So that way, if you have two files which are very common to each other and differ only a bit. Uh, you can save up, uh, you know, on, on your storage space by oh. use of deduplication. Right. If if we put it very simply, extended partition support is going to be uh, built in uh, with twenty ten point zero three. We have a VM constructor coming up, which is very interesting because now we would be able to construct standard virtual machines, which can be shared, uh, you know, onto different platforms. So that's going to be very very exciting, especially you know uh, people who are interested about virtualization and yeah. and, and uh, uh, you. You know such uh, uh, such cool stuff. Along with that, we are also going to have uh, better sound support. Okay. okay, so for both for users as well for uh, as well as for uh, media developers and things like that, we would have uh, good sound support coming up uh, through Boom Sound System. Cups is going to become the standard printing service uh, for Open Solaris. So better printer support, and uh, we would have the latest genome build, of course. So. Uh, latest version of genome is going to come out with it. So there are a lot of interesting stuff which has gone into it and uh, the best part is you can very easily upgrade Open Solaris from one distribution to the other. It is it is just automatically done through the update manager. Oh. So if you have an existing 2009.06 release installed on your, onto your computer, just connect it to the internet and update it using the update manager once the new version is released. So uh, well, we're looking forward to it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Another question that's probably on everyone's mind right now, considering that netbooks as a form factor is getting very popular. You have Linux distros that are aimed specifically at netbooks, which are that are kind of light and optimized for a small screen. So, in the Open Solaris world, is there something coming up for netbooks specifically? Yes, so Open Solaris has a very good support for netbooks. Uh, you see, Toshiba makes uh, you know standard netbooks which comes preloaded with Open Solaris. Okay. Uh, though I don't think so, they are still available in India. Right. But I saw them uh, when I was in the US, and you know they are very user friendly. All the features of Open Solaris work absolutely fine. So and you know we have a, a community, netbook community itself on OpenSolaris.org, which works towards you know porting uh, uh, Open Solaris on netbooks. They have been running pretty fine. We have seen a lot of people using Open Solaris on netbooks. It works absolutely fine. There is a good device driver support. And if you want to install Open Solaris on a netbook, I would recommend that you go and just check out the hardware compatibility list or HCL uh, for Open Solaris. Um, the link uh, is given here. You can just try it out and uh, you can see how, how Open Solaris ready your netbook is. Wow. Thanks. So thanks for answering all our questions. Thanks a lot, Siddharth. Thanks a lot for having me here. Welcome.